Hello, how y'all doing today? It's your boy Shaq House. Beautiful Friday today. You like my X Men Jim Lee shirt? <laughs> Very nice. Um, yeah, what's it called? Today, as usual, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give my recap of the um, of Marvel's What If, the um, episode number seven. What if Thor were an only child? <clears throat> The episode starts off with Jane Foster and Darcy in the desert searching for extraterrestrial life, much like they did in Thor, the first Thor movie from 2011, right? Yeah, they're dealing with S.H.I.E.L.D. bureaucracy as well, too, once they finally do detect some extraterrestrial life. Jane Foster, she calls them up, and S.H.I.E.L.D., they're, they're giving her the runaround. In fact, by the time the extraterrestrial life lands, she's on the phone with their parks department. Yeah, parks and recreation. <laughs> Yeah, so Thor and company, the Warriors 3, Volstagg, Lady Sif and company, they arrive on Earth, in Las Vegas no less. But they're not here to conquer anybody or declare their godhood. They arrive on Earth as intergalactic partiers. Yeah, that's right, intergalactic partiers, folks. <clears throat> See, in this reality, this reality diverges from the MCU when uh, Odin, uh, the, the all-father of Asgard, he doesn't take Loki in as his foster son. In fact, when he finds the Loki finds Loki as a baby, he just hands him back to the Frost Giants who raise him. And without Loki to, to give Thor something, something of a counterbalance, Thor becomes more hedonistic and narcissistic. So when Odin finally goes into one of his thousand-year comas, you know, the Odin sleep or whatever, yeah, once he's finally out, Frigga decides, okay, I'm going to go to Solstice and hang out with my sisters now. We're going to drink some Chardonnays and watch the Solstice for the next thousand years. And she um, she warns Thor not to have any parties, to brush up on his studies, and that Heimdall will be watching them. But Thor, he's a crafty motherfucker. He finds a way around all this, of course, by going to the one place that Heimdall will not look at. Namely, our environment, Earth! And he invites everybody for that party in Vegas, including some of the Ravagers, some of the members who become part of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and even some Skrulls. Jane, Foster, and Darcy, they arrive. And mind you also, the, the entire, most of the cast is voiced by the people who did the Thor films. So Chris Hemsworth is reprising his, his role as Thor. Um, Natalie Portman as Jane Foster. Kat Dennings as Darcy. Jamie Alexander as um, Lady Sif. Yeah, and Tom Hiddleston, he also returns as Loki as well, too. But you're not going to hear um, Anthony Hopkins as um, as Odin or Rene Russo as Frigga. Yeah, so scratch that. You do, however, get Colby Smulders as uh, Maria Hill. But at the party, back to the party, my fault. Jane and uh, Darcy, they arrive, and um, Jane, she notices that the alien in question that they detected is Thor, and she is smitten. Smitten by Goldilocks and his blonde locks. I repeated myself there. My bad. <clears throat> anyway, Darcy, she treats... <clears throat> Darcy, she looks around at all the other aliens. And she sees Howard the Duck there. Yeah, Howard the Duck is there, voiced by Seth Green, no less. And she takes a jab at him. And he's like, please, like, you're any better as a brunette. <laughs> yeah, he's no slouch in the insult department. His damn self. So people need to watch out for Howard the Duck. Um, what else happens? Um, before going up to Thor, she asks Darcy, how do I look? How do I look? Do I look good? And she clearly likes Thor. And she introduces herself and has plenty of, of uh, adult innuendo moments in dealing with Thor. Thor is like, I don't know what a horse dog is, but I know how to bring the thunder, if you know what I mean. Yeah, we know what you mean, Thor. <clears throat> And he also confirms that he destroyed a planet, this Alpha Centurion planet or whatever that Jane Foster was looking for. Yeah, she, he confirms that he was on the planet and by partying too much, he destroyed it. But no matter, because Thor and Jane, they dance, they drink, they party with Jeff Goldblum as the Grandmaster again, reprising his role as the Grandmaster. He's DJing the party. Yeah, Darcy decides to swallow her pride and have a drink with Howard the Duck. And they even get married with one of those Elvis impersonators officiating the wedding. Yeah, Jane and Thor, they even go to a tattoo parlor, get matching tattoos before they decide to have a one-night stand together. 
you know, she wakes up alone in a king size bed to various phones ringing the, the hotel phone and her cell phone. And it's Shield that's trying to reach her. In fact, Shield is already at her door, banging on it, talking about if you don't open the door, we'll break it down. Like Jane Foster has any concern for, for, for that fucking door. The fuck out of here, Shield. Anyway, Maria Hill, voiced once, as I stated before, once voiced by Colby Smolders, she decides to um, interrogate Maria and. Um, <clears throat> She talks to... she and Maria Hill decides to interrogate Jane. My, my bad. And they talk to her about the alien presence that she was trying to warn them about. And um, and she makes note that she's acting director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, since um, Nick Fury, he was at the Vegas party and he ended up getting injured. So, um, <clears throat> she's interrogated... Jane Foster is interrogated by Maria Hill... And um, she learns that Thor, he is spreading his parties around, including even even the, the Pennsylvania Dutch country. Yeah, Amish country is where Thor is spreading his parties. He must have quite an effect on people. Jane learns right then and there that Thor, he left. And she's all like, he, he, he just left? He didn't leave a note or anything? And in the process, inadvertently reveals to everybody that she fucked him. But they do find Thor in Paris. And S.H.I.E.L.D., as a result... They call him their last resort. We'll find out what that is in a second. But we go to Paris. Thor's having a party there where he's met by a frost giant variant of Loki. Loki is voiced by Tom Hiddleston again, but he's a giant now, no longer small in stature. He's blue and still has, and still has his trademark horns. Right? In, in this reality, Thor and Loki, we're brothers from another mother. They're party buddies, basically. And right as they're partying, a shooting star lands right in front of them, and that's their last resort. Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel. I'm sorry, Miss Marvel. Yeah, you will never hear me call. You will never hear me call Carol Danvers uh, Captain Marvel. She don't deserve that title. The guy who originally had it, Marvel, he deserves it. The first woman to hold the Captain Marvel title, uh, Monica Rambo, she deserves it. Carol Danvers, she's always going to be Miss Marvel to me. Write that down. So she comes down there and she demands that Thor and company clean up the mess that they made on Earth and, the, and leave the planet. He refuses. She punches him. A fight ensues and they knock each other across continents. <laughs> What's it called? And Thor even hits her with the hammer. And I gotta tell you, right when, right when they start fighting, right before they start fighting, uh, Carol Danvers, she starts off by saying, hey, White Snake, we need to chat. It's funny that she mentioned White Snake because as they start fighting, um, this song is what I'm thinking of. That was Come and Get It by White Snake during their blues rock phase. Um, but yeah, they end up fighting each other. They knock each other across continents. Um, what's it called? And Thor, just to be petty, he even destroys Stonehenge. Um, yeah. And they end up right back in France where they started, where Danvers is beaten, held down by the hammer, and declared a party pooper by everybody. So in the next scene, Carol Danvers is being dressed down by Maria Hill, right? And that's when Jane gets a phone call from, guess who? Thor. Yeah. They learn that Thor called her, and now they want to lure him, to, they want to lure Thor to a deserted area where they can drop a nuclear bomb on him. Jane Foster is against it because it's way too over the top. So she tries to call Thor to warn him. Loki answers Thor's phone because he's having some uh, some late night takeout. Late night Chinese takeout. And more of Thor's Asgardian people show up. The rest of the Frost Giants show up. Um, Surtur, he shows up. And they cause more chaos on Earth. They, def they deface Mount Rushmore. Uh, they practically destroy the Statue of Liberty. They even steal the Gateway Arch from St. Louis. St. Louis, St. Louis, whatever the hell you want to call it. And that's when Jane gets the idea to contact Heimdall and, and then she's teleported to Asgard where she meets Frigga. Thor, he has one more fight with Carol Danvers as he's trying to slide down the, the Australian Opera House. Yeah, he has one more fight with her and she slams him right down to the Swiss Alps where he says, that's enough because I actually felt that. <laughs> And Thor's about to get nuclear bombed when Frigga's astral form just intrudes and, and interrupts the whole event. And she admonishes Thor, who claims to have been on Earth for a cultural exchange. Yeah, right. 
And she's intrigued by that. And then she says, I promise to end my vacation. I'm going to come to Earth to inspect your progress. And the force and the Thor's chagrin, he's got to cover up and clean up the mess he made before his mother arrives. But no one wants to help him. Loki's about to dip out. The Guardians and the Ravagers are about to dip. They are, and they think now he's the party pooper. So then he flies up in the sky and bellows out, You all need to help me. My mother is coming. So that's enough motivation to help them, to help him, help Thor repair everything that he's done. He even, he even fixed the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Yeah. <laughs> so when Frigga arrives, she's not entirely convinced that Thor's telling the truth until Miss Marvel, she flies in and brings him an iPad full of information. And then we, when he calls back for his hammer, right? Bring me my hammer. It comes back all prettied up, and that's how she knows that he was bullshit. She knows that he was bullshitting the whole time. In the last few scenes, um, Thor he goes to Jane Foster's uh, desert desert trailer or whatever, and he asks he asks her out on a proper date. He asks her so that he asks her to go with him on a planet full of unicorns. Hint hint. She agrees, and everything appears to be happily ever after, all per the Watcher's narration, until. A group of robots materialize. Yeah, these robots, they, they arrive on Earth and they're led by an Ultron robot who has all six of the Infinity Gems and, and a mass and his a helmet reveals the vision is inside of him. And that's where the episode ends. I thought it was, I thought it was a pretty nice touch having Howard the Duck interact with Darcy. I mean, and Seth Green had to be the voice of Howard the Duck. I mean, that was entertaining, seeing these two wits just go back and forth. They, they, should, have, they should have had more of that. Kind of like how Tony Stark and uh, Doctor Strange were interacting in Avengers Infinity War. It, it's, this episode was entitled, What If Thor Were an Only Child? Well, why didn't they mention Frigg? I mean, a Hela at all. The, the Asgardian goddess of death, who was basically Thor's half-sister, his paternal half-sister from, from, from his father, Odin. They didn't talk about her at all. I mean, what the hell? And the vision inside Ultron... That kind of doesn't make any sense because in this reality, if the Avengers were formed, Thor was not part of them. And Tony Stark, he invented Ultron as a global defense system. And he tweaked it so that it became sentient and had its own robotic avatar eventually. But if events did proceed accordingly as they did in Avengers, in Avengers Age of Ultron, but without Thor, then it's totally plausible that Tony Stark did did still create Ultron and, and Stark and Bruce Banner did upload Jarvis into a synthetic body as the Vision but clearly everything went to hell since they got some sentience, decided to team up or merge together and just and wreak, hell on, wreak havoc on Earth but if they have all the Infinity Gems that means Thanos never Thanos never popped through and it was also a nice detail when a Loki was talking to Jane Foster on that iPhone and Loki being a frost giant, the phone's going to be very minuscule to him. It's going to be like this small to him. Yeah. Mm. And Heimdall, he wasn't voiced by Idris Elba at all. He just didn't say anything or at the most he just mm, grunted. And Maria Hill, Kobe Smolders, her, Smolders, her Maria Hill in this reality sounded very robotic. Like, do you know why I'm acting director of S.H.I.E.L.D.? We are here for the extraterrestrial phenomenon that you've been you've been uh, you've been contacting us about. Yeah, it was it was very. You know, she was a lot more lively in, in in the live action movies, especially Age of Ultron, where we finally saw her dress down in a red dress and smile and have some fun. Anyway, um, that's my recap for What If Episode Seven. Join me next week. Same Stone Cold time. Same Stone Cold channel.